now this is the second part of this chapter children now already we have studied about the ecosystem its biotic and abiotic component now uh, we are going to study about the food chain now food chain and food web as it is very clear and we are studying it from our lower classes also green plants they eat the primary consumer prime primary consumer they eat the secondary consumer secondary consumer eat the tertiary consumer tertiary eat the top consumers so what they are forming they are forming a food chain so this food chain when the uh, the living organisms they are dependent on one another and then they are forming a chain that sequence that chain is called as food chain now food chain is the what is food chain a food chain is a linear sequence of organisms in which each organism eats the lower member and itself eaten by the next higher member the lower organisms they are eaten by the higher uh, higher than this organism and higher organism they eat the members of this this lower member so that is simply a food chain now as we know in our atmosphere many food chains are there many plants they are eaten by rat rat is eaten by owl plants eaten by rat rat eats eaten by fox same way many food chains are there so when there are many food chains so it will form a network of chains so that network of chain is called as a food web where many interconnecting food chains are present so that will be a food web now food web again there is a the same process when the higher organism eats the lower that organism become dead again mixed with the soil and again the minerals are absorbed by the plant for their further growth so that is called as a food web now if we talk why this ecosystems are needed now ecosystems as we know ecosystem existence of plant life is integral to the continuity and development of most of ecosystem means continuity without plant there will no there will be no continuity of the life so plants they are the uh, plants include everything from small blade of grass to the biggest and the oldest tree in the forest the environment it is made by two component now organic and inorganic so organic component and inorganic component and plants are the only link of food chain without food chain there will be no linking without food chain these um, uh, minerals they will not transferred from one organism to another so when the plants they are very very important for making a just a path for passing that minerals to primary consumer then secondary consumer tertiary and again they are coming back to the soil so that is why this is very very plants are very very important for the survival on the earth next is the advantages of food web what is the advantage of food web advantage is the food web permits alternative food alternative food means if the uh, any organisms want to eat whatever they want to eat what is their food they eat that organism directly so alternately if they, if they are not getting animals they are eating plants if they are not getting plants they are eating animals so that is the advantage of that food web that everyone is getting proper chance for their survival in case the food becomes scarce means food the amount of food becomes less so food web is it provide more stability to the ecosystem than the food chain in food chain they are directly linked but in food web they will get the many chances to eat the different type of organisms now next is the food pyramid it is again interrelated with the food uh, chain and food web now first we talk about the producers as we know children in this earth maximum plants are present on the earth then very um, less than plants 
primary consumers are there those who are only dependent on the plants and after that only the secondary consumers are present which are less than the primary consumers maximum people they eat only the plant product and maximum uh, animals they eat only the other animals so they are dependent on one another so how they are making a pyramid if we make the pyramid that is the pyramid of the grass means the pyramid of plant so plants they are eating they are more in number so they make the first pyramid because the plants they are millions in number they make the first pyramid when the we talk about the primary consumer they are very less in number as compared to plants so they make the second pyramid and if we talk about the other animals like say carnivores so they are lesser than the primary consumers so they make a small pyramid so that is called as a food pyramid so food pyramid it depends on the mass how much the uh, mass is dependent on plants and the amount of plant is more on the earth now next is interdependence between organism very simple topic children interdependence of organisms so as we have learnt about biotic component and abiotic component so as we know the plants there is a large population present on the earth so every species every animal every human beings they need something to eat and they are dependent on plants so they need soil for the growth of plant in the soil organic materials are present so those are organic material again it has come from the no uh, the dead organisms so ultimately there is a cycle that has formed and because of that only we are able to survive as a human beings we help them in the pollination we provide uh life to them just like growing more and more plants same way uh, the plants they produce different kind of food they are providing us the food they are giving us oxygen we are giving them carbon dioxide so what we are doing we are dependent on each other and this interaction of the organisms sometime it is harmful just like other organism if they are eaten by other higher organisms so that may be benef not beneficial for us but still because all the living life is going on on the earth so this type of interactions are help occurring now there are some interaction which are of three types just like symbiosis parasitism and parasitism and predation symbiosis parasitism and predation now first what is symbiosis now symbiosis again a interaction between the organisms but in this all the species are benefited from each other just like we take the example of lichens lichens they are present on the plants so when they are present on the plant uh, the fungus and alga they live together on the same branch of that tree and both are getting beneficial from each other same way if we talk about plant and animals plants we are helping in pollinating them we are helping in the dispersing or uh, dispersal of seed same way as a fee animals are paid fees by the uh, plants they are giving them juicy fruits nutrition fruits so what is the plants and animals they are dependent on each other and they are ben getting benefit from each other so that is called as symbiosis when both the species are benefited from each other next is the para parasitism so parasitism is that in which one organism receives advantage and other is at loss one receive advantage and other is at loss so because of that it the, this process is called as parasitism so it just like uh, if you take the example of mosquito so malaria, malaria parasite if we it comes and eat the host it will spread the disease it has suck, taken his food it has sucked the blood from the body of the person so the mosquito is benefited but other organisms like us we are not benefited from that so that process is called parasitism next is the predation 
Predation means catching and killing other other organisms for their food. Just like eager, eager whatever sees, maybe the living organism, maybe the dead organism, it comes and eat that organism. So that or uh, the eagle, it may be considered as a prey in that. So the process is called as predation. So these are the interdependence of organisms, and it includes three type of more processes. Next is the flora and fauna of forest ecosystem flora means plants and fauna means animals so as we know different type of plants are present in the forest different type of animals are present in the forest so they make the forest ecosystem so depending on them which type of plants and which type of animals are present in the ecosystem we have four type of rain forest tropical rainforest temperate deciduous forest coniferous forest and the last one is the gir forest jim corbett national park and jalda para century west bengal so this six uh, these three are there and under under coniferous forest these three are present okay so mainly the three are there tropical tropical rain forest so it will include evergreen trees bamboos ferns shrubs and animal it will include jungle cats leopards monkeys squirrel etc so that name we have given tropical forest and it is present in the western coast of india in the north east himalayas next is the temperate temperate deciduous forest it will include teak sandalwood salwood etc and they are present in the eastern coast of india coniferous forest they are in the himalaya at the altitude of above 1700 to 3000 meter so they also contain different type of plants and animals now particular forest of india they are the gir forest jem corbett forest and jal para uh, jalad para century so in this they also contain different type of plants and animals it is gir forest it is of gujarat jim corbett national park it is in uttarakhand jalada para century century it is in west bengal so they contain different type of plants and animals according to the areas because as we know plants and animals they require some certain condition for their growth so uh, now risk of the next topic is the risk of ecosystem so risk of ecosystem is that children as we know nowadays the natural resources natural heritage it is not being preserved for centuries so it is now decreasing greatly so if the wildlife if the plant it will decrease on the earth it will result in the danger of ecosystem so uh, if the shortage will occur of plant life as well as the animals then definitely our life we are also not able to survive on the earth so we should preserve the wildlife we should preserve the plant and animals so there is a need of restore and conserve the ecosystem so first thing is that being responsible humans we can do we can conserve our eco system we can pro protect our wild life we can protect our natural resources like forest rivers etc and if we are going to protect them definitely in our life we are able to get more benefit and are we are not going to disturb our eco system so this is all about the chapter children i will uh, send the video uh, today only and let uh, homework is read the chapter carefully thank you children